and welcome to this episode of Beyond the Bio, where I'm joined today by Scott English, who is brand director at CEMG, the combined publishing and events brand behind Elite Business. And this is a super timely episode because the EB100 is now live for applications. So if you haven't heard of the EB100, then you're going to be finding out all about it in this episode, along with some hints and tips to apply. So this episode is for you if you are are thinking about entering any awards really because the advice will be applicable to any award ceremony but this is going to be focused on the EB100 and hopefully will inspire you to apply. Let's get stuck in. So welcome Scott English to Beyond the Bio. Really excited to talk to you today about the EB100. So let's kick off with you telling us a bit about yourself and what inspired you to create the EB100. Absolutely. And it's a pleasure to be here. Great to great to see you, Sophie. Yeah, so we, we're in a digital publisher, very much in the SME entrepreneurial space. So we've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of very successful entrepreneurs over the years, and we provide a lot of content for SMEs anyway. So my background is I'm the direct brand director at Elite Business Online across a multitude of our products and services. And we come up with the idea in the EB100 because we found there was a bit of a gap in the marketplace in terms of celebrating SMEs. Now, you you might be thinking to yourself, Sophie, well, I I can list you off, Scott, about 100 different awards that go on in the country for SMEs from local, regional and national scale. So I'd be very surprised to hear what your gap is. But me too. And I know, Sophie, you're a judge on a lot of different awards around the country. Um, And I have been as well for the last, well, last 15 years or so. And what what we found, obviously, being a publisher in the SME space, providing really great content to help small to medium enterprise business owners, is with the awards, we we, te- we, we didn't fa- ever find through being a judge that there's enough detail and enough about the cogs, if you like, of a working business, what makes it tick in the right direction, what really makes it become an elite business. And, and also we found with a lot of these um, awards, because we work with a lot of them in partnership, we didn't really find anything that wasn't was a hundred list that wasn't done via research. So the publisher's putting them together, if you like, through research of their own. We didn't see there was any real competition that was out there that people have to enter in order to, you know, become a top 100 company. So, and all these elements, we thought, you know what, we we interview all these amazing entrepreneurs that were nothing a couple of years ago, and now they're turning over like 70 million pound companies. And we interview about how they did that. So we thought we'd, we'd offer it out there and for, for individuals, you know, directors uh, to have the chance to to call themselves an elite business. Mm. So it's still new, isn't it? So we've done year one and this is year two, literally launching the day of, of this episode, which is super exciting. So tell us a bit about how the EB100 Awards actually work and what the selection process is like to determine these top 100 best SMEs. Sure, absolutely. So in terms of entering the competition, we have to have some some guidelines in there in terms of criteria and who the brands are, or, or it wouldn't be a fair competition. So the company itself, you have to be a business owner that's employee size two to 250. So you have to be within that bracket. Otherwise, then it becomes more uh, medium in terms of medium and large in terms of who we're judging. Your company turnover has got to be between 100K to 50 million if you want to enter uh, the competition. And you've got to be a UK-based business that's privately owned and that's been trading for at least two years. So you're a working, functioning, emerging SME business owner. And what we do to make it fair is we don't, and there's, as you know, there's a lot of different awards out there that are quite niche and specialise in certain areas of business. This is for overall. So we've tried to pick the things that are fair to everybody. Um, So we don't really property development companies or financial trading money management or, or franchisors, you know, you can't enter if you're one of them. But there are loads of great awards in the industry that you can enter if you are. But this is for overall SME businesses. The criteria have been sort of two to, to 250 and that wide revenue bracket. 
Does that mean that if you're at the top end of that with loads of employees and making loads of money that you're automatically likely to win? You know, what's what's the incentive for those that are only two people that are just over the 100 grand? Have they still got a good chance? Well, yeah, that's the great thing about this competition in terms of the criteria that we score on, because you're right. You're absolutely right. You'd automatically assume that if there's a company that's got 249 employees, they're turning over 49 million a, a year and you know they're, they've been running for 25 years you automatically think that they're going to score the highest which in other competitions they probably would what we try to do with eb100 just because you've got a lot of staff or, or you outsource to a bigger team or just because you are turning over more and you've got a bigger profits it doesn't necessarily make you a better company because nowadays as you know there's so much towards what makes a, a real strong business So what we've done is we've created eight different criteria that score on different areas in which we feel is an elite business, if you like. So for example, like, yeah, we we do score on longevity and and team size and how long the business has been trading because rightly so they do deserve that. Uh, They do deserve the fact that they've, you know, they've been successfully trading for so long and they've built a great team. But that's only like one or two of the criteria that we'll score on. So the other criteria are things like contribution. So, you know, these recognize businesses that have made significant contribution to the community as a whole. So rather than just your usual metrics on profit, uh, turnover and profit, you know, what are, they, what are they doing for the society? You know, what's the purpose of the business? Purpose is huge now in terms of what the business is doing. And, you know, what are they giving back to charity? How are they helping the community? How are they helping the sector in general? So that's why. And, and then there's other criteria as well, like innovation. For example, what is the business doing that sets itself apart from different brands in the market? Or have these two employees come up with this amazing new tech uh, that they've found that some of the larger SMEs aren't doing that, that is creating this incredible purpose run company? So, you know, you might see there's eight different criteria that you can score on. So, absolutely, what it does is it's an all in pits all. So it gives the opportunities for emerging businesses, SMEs to be recognized, which is so, so important. So it gives that encouragement uh, and incentive for businesses that, um, that aren't, that aren't you know, aren't at the, the larger end of the metrics, like haven't got all the employees. And, and, and the interesting thing as well is that, you know, it's incredible to see the journeys of some of these business owners and, and what they've done in such a short space of time. Like they might not have you know, a million market spend uh, as a larger type small SME, but they're still being able to compete with with their large competitors because of the innovation that they're using as a business. So it's incredibly interesting how how businesses small and medium can compete against each other, and and to view the ranking as well. You know, last year it was it was incredible to see some of the smaller businesses come above some of the more established SMEs because of what they're doing and the purpose of the brand. Yeah, I really enjoyed judging last year, apart from the fact you gave me about 5 million entries to judge. But I did really enjoy it. Which is so good, Sophie. That's why it was. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But I did really enjoy it. And I I, I love reading about businesses that I'm yet to know and it was, it was really interesting for sure. It was really good. So obviously this is now year two of the EB100. So... We've had year one, we've had that 100. What happens to those people that were in the 100 last year? Do they reapply this year and fight it out for all, with all the new entrants? How does it work? Well, yeah, um, absolutely that. So it was our pilot year, if you like. So everybody's got the opportunity to re-enter if they want to. You don't have to re-enter if you don't want to, but um, we recommend you do for a few reasons, really. Firstly, um, now the first year's launched, it was super successful. Year two, we've already got a lot more people that want to enter this year because they saw the awards, they saw everyone talking about social media. So we've got a lot of interest. I think anyone that did enter last year should definitely enter this year to see how they come up against other brands that didn't enter. You know, will who will be the rising stars? Of, of the guide, you know, will you be going up 10 places or will you be coming down a little bit? So from a business owner's perspective, it, it, you know, absolutely you should enter to see how, not not just for the accolade itself, but to see how you're getting on really against other new brands, that other new emerging brands that are coming in into mm. the competition. Should be like top of the pops in at number whatever, <laughs> 10 places up. So alongside the actual 100, there are awards for different categories. Are we still going to see that again this yes. year? 
Absolutely, yeah. So we're gonna we have the additional awards. I mean, the great thing about the EB100 that we found last year is normally when you go to an awards evening, you know, there's a there's a bit of a mood across the across the room, isn't there? Because you don't know if you're going to win or you've been shortlisted. The amazing thing about the EB100 celebrating awards evening is everyone there is already a winner. So it's great to come and pick up your certificate and get some photos in front of the. Uh, the media display and meet all of our amazing presenters and also most importantly network with all them incredible entrepreneurs that they're in a room with. But yeah, what we do is we have additional awards, very special recognition that we hand out for exceptional performances in particular areas of, of the business. So for example, like we have the diversity and inclusion of the year award. So if a particular company is really highlighted and how they've gone above and beyond and scored really high, and the judges have made specific comments on that, then they, they'll be shortlisted potentially to win an additional award. And to some businesses at the moment, you know, these kind of accolades are super important to what they're looking to achieve and how they're looking to, to showcase themselves in the UK as a business. So we have, we have awards like that, but also we have awards where things, for example, like we discussed before. So we have like the Rising Star of the Year Award for those that, that have entered in previous years. So if you move up the highest amount of positions, like you were saying, like top of the pops, like last year you were 40, now you're up to number three, um, the highest um, change in positioning for example, um, within the whole hundred, we'll get the Rising Star of the Year award. So we make a big song and dance about, you know, these really exceptional performances as well. And the awards aren't just for the more established of the winners in the awards. So we also um, have the British Business Bank Startup Business of the Year award. And that award is specifically looking at the, the smaller end of the scale. So perhaps they've only got a few employees or they're, they're really at that emerging stage and they perform the highest out of everyone that's in that, that specific remit, if you like, of individual, the business stage, really. Then there's a chance to be shortlisted and win that award as well. So it sounds like coming along to the event itself is well worth it because not only are you celebrating the success of, of getting into the awards, but you potentially might win a, a, a category that you didn't even know about. And it's that networking bit. Yep. And I remember from last year, the socials were really hot. Loads of people were there. There was some super cool people, you know, doing all sorts of posts and tagging people in and things. There was lots of, lots of activity. So all, all good. So, Obviously, we've got the the benefits of coming to the awards itself and that socialising and celebrating. What other benefits would you say there are for companies that enter and get shortlisted within the EV100? Well, the biggest one, of course, is the accolade in its own right, the credibility with becoming an EV100 finalist or winner, if you want to call it, because... The individuals that judge these awards are very high profile. You know, they're, they're business titans in their own right in different specific areas. So it's kind of like you're getting the nod from some exceptionally high profile entrepreneurs that you are you are moving in the right direction and you are an elite business. So to explain that to potential suppliers that you work with or potential customers to have the recognition of being an elite business is is very important. And, and from a marketing perspective as well, I mean, let's face it, if, if the general, you know, consumer see, consumer do, right? So let's, let's look at it. You've got two identical brands that are out there in the marketplace and you're going to buy from one of them. Who are you going to buy for? The one that's got, you know, a gold EB100 accreditation or one that hasn't? You know, so it's very important for, particularly as well for an emerging brand. I think it's really important. So if you are trying to compete with some of the more enterprise level companies, you know, how do you get a leg up on them? Well, you can showcase the, the fact and demonstrate that you are an innovative brand or you've got a lot of purpose behind what you guys are offering. And let's face it, that's that's a lot of what people are buying nowadays, aren't they? They're buying behind the brand, not just the, the, what the brand looks like. So it's, it's, it's very important. They're just, they're just a few reasons. I mean, I'm happy to share... Um, you know, some success stories or, yes, or anecdotes, if you like. Yes. Yeah, tell us, tell us what's happened to some of, some of the winners from, from last year. Tell us some success stories. Yeah, well, look, look, look I'm, I'm super passionate about this stuff, right? I mean, I have to be because, like, elite business is all about inspiring SMEs to start, you know, and grow a, a successful business. So I'm very passionate about it. It excites me a lot. And, and I love when I hear these kind of stories because – 
it just goes to show that what you're doing is helping people. And that that's a huge motivator uh, for me across all of the brands at uh, our company. But yeah, in particular, I, I haven't had permission to, to they've got testimonials, um, but I haven't had permission. But what we are is, is we try, we're a community in a sense of what we do because people continue to talk afterwards and have them really key relationships and people want to help each other so we we continue to have conversations with the winners throughout the year and and find out about what they've been up to and and how it's been helping them particularly some of the additional award winners as well but one company in particular they are an emerging type of business as an SME then they haven't got mass amounts of team and a marketing budget to spend to pull in customers but they immediately as soon as they won a lot of their existing contracts that they were working with wanted to renew straight away because they want to be working with an award-winning business. Not only did the success of it help generate more business for them, but they then also found that it gave them the confidence to look at entering other awards that were that are nationally recognised as well. And they did. And straight after our one, they entered three other awards and they come out as winners of all of them awards as well. Now, if it wasn't for them even attempting to enter the EB100, you know, they wouldn't have even thought about entering other awards either. So as they say, success creates success, right? And, you know, it just goes to show. And that has helped that business grow even further. And it's given them the confidence and, and higher revenue generation as a business because they won this accolade and they've moved forward. So that's, that's brilliant. That's really, really good to hear. And I think having been a judge for the EB100 and, th- and thinking about the different sections that the entrants are required to complete, I think it's probably a really useful reflection exercise, actually, just for them to think about what they've done under those different areas. I think it, in itself, that exercise would be really useful for, for planning for growth, for thinking about great PR stories that they can perhaps share, because it allows them to shine a spotlight on the business and and share some really quite unique stories i think yeah absolutely absolutely and and because the eb100 is it you know it's not for the light-hearted let's put it that way this isn't an entrepreneur story about why you got into business this is in-depth working of of the model and how it works at the moment so i think what it does is it helps you to identify areas potentially where you could improve as a business owner so I, I totally agree with that because it's in depth, in depth and goes across so much of the, the the whole business, whether that be like the team, the tech that you're using, for example, gives you an opportunity to, to really think about, you know, the tech and how you can improve that. So, yeah, I totally agree. Have you got any top tips for anyone that's sat there, they're, they've got the website open and they're looking at that entry form? Any top tips that are going to give them a, a head start? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's there's loads of tips. I think some of the important ones, the most important, I would say to, to anyone that's entering is follow the criteria. Really follow the criteria because there's so much in there that will help support your application and, and it's a way to use it as a guideline to make sure not just the information that you um, that you think makes you a top business, but the information that the judges are looking for to, to find out who is a top business. So it's it's critical uh, to follow that criteria um, as finely as you can. Really, really important. I think sometimes I see entrants that almost write the entry they want to write without reading the question in too much detail. So really important to make sure that they're answering what's been asked and making full use of the word count and, and being really succinct at the same time. Yeah, and, and I'd, also, I'd, I'd also advise as well is not everybody knows your industry in as much detail as you do. So it comes down to KISS really, keep it simple and stupid. So keep it so that any somebody that has no insight into your industry whatsoever understands what it means within your industry. So when you're using acronyms or you're talking about, you know, your your contribution, just be super clear. Um, to somebody that that has never seen it before so that they understand. And the reason I'm saying that is because you should be recognized for your achievements in your business. And if you're not clear what they are, then potentially you could be 
you know, shaving points off your own application. Mm. Excellent advice. Awesome. Well, as we said at the start, the EB100 is now live and ready for entries for this year. So do get your entries in, do check it out. We will have a link to the EB100 entry form in the show notes. So please take a look and get your entries in. Do we know the deadline, Scott? Yeah, the deadline will be end of November. End of November. So keep an eye on all the updates and and sign up to Elite Business while you are on the website too. And best of luck. And hopefully we'll see you at the EB100 event in March 2024. Thank you for listening. If you're serious about growing your profile, take our free profile assessment quiz to see where you're at right now and get hints and tips on how to improve your score. You'll find the link to the quiz in the show notes. If you've enjoyed the episode, it would be mint if you'd subscribe, like and leave a review. See you next Monday.